So here's the challenge. I have a piece of 25 gauge stainless steel sheet uh, which I've hacked out uh, just rough to shape there which I want to make into a disc like this. And uh, this disc has no hole in the middle. It's thin. How are we going to hold it? That's the challenge. Or a piece of uh, 16 gauge galvanized steel or a piece of plastic, plastic electrical sheet. So I want to make a disc, no hole, how am I going to hold it? This is the challenge. So here is the pressure turning tool that um, I made last week and today I'd like to show you how um, I use this. First of all, we're going to start with the plastic, the uh, electrical sheet. So we'll just centre it. There we are, perfectly formed disc, no marking whatsoever. Next we'll uh, try a piece of steel. Okay, this is the uh, 16 gauge galvanized steel. Galvanized or non-galvanized, that doesn't make any difference, it's just the, the gauge I'm referring to. Okay, disc is cut, we'll just uh, deeper and then uh, take a look, see what it looks like. There we are. There's our disc. It did actually spin slightly um, at the beginning because I didn't have the tailstock up tight enough. There wasn't enough pressure on there. It spun slightly. Uh, but there we are. Next, uh, try a larger sheet of plastic. I'm taking light cuts because uh, there's not much holding it in place there, just friction on one side, so hence the light cuts.
There we are. Okay, lastly we have the stainless steel sheet. See how that goes. There we are. I'd like to say a little bit about the limitations of a pressure per turning tool and uh, to point out that uh, this can't be used um, as a live center. Um, you remember from the construction uh, article or this construction video last week that the assembly comprises a bearing at the bottom of the bore, a sleeve and then um, a front bearing which is a sliding fit in the bore, um, just a nice fit and in the schematic diagram you'll see that uh, how the axial load is in fact transferred um, from the work into the body of the taper turning of the uh, pressure turning tool. So the load comes through the rotating member it, which presses on the inner race um, of the outer bearing through the balls into the outer track which is as I mentioned before a sliding fit in the bore through this sleeve and uh, the sleeve then bears on the rear race which is already seated in the bottom of the hole and um, you can see in that way that the load path is through here into the body. So why isn't this uh, suitable uh, to be to double up as a live center rotating center? Well of course if you had if you were to use this in that situation you'd have not only an axial force but a radial component and uh, you can see that in the, um, the schematic for a um, perhaps a quite a high quality uh, live center you can see there's an axial force here and a radial force which comes from the cutting tool and um, to to cater with both forces um, we actually have three rolling elements in this design we have a roller bearing at the front which is obviously uh, suitable for catering with the radial load um, the axial load is transferred through the rotating element directly to this thrust bearing um, at the bottom of the the hole and um, there's also a third bearing here um, which is uh, to provide um, um, uh, to to provide stability to stop the internal internal the, the rotating element from rotating like that there's a couple you can see around this bearing and uh, the function of that is to stop that um, this may be, this is probably a, a rather expensive uh, type of um, live center. Um, I have here a diagram of um, an alternative design. So this is um, probably
probably a cheaper design which uh, employs just two rolling elements, a angular contact ball bearing on the front and a thrust bearing on the back. So as before, the axial load is transferred through the rotating element into this collar and then by that collar onto um, this side of the thrust bearing and through the thrust bearing into the body of the tool. And the, the radial component is um, catered for by this uh, angular contact ball bearing. And um, in fact, the design of this thrust bearing must also be able to take some component of, of um, radial load. So in effect, what we're doing here is we're using um, this bearing uh, purely to, to stabilize radially and this bearing to provide uh, axial um, location and load transfer and also a small degree of radial. And um, uh, this assembly must be preloaded. Um, I guess this cap here um, bears on the outer part of the race and uh, um, uh, provides a degree of preload through, through the, the, the ball bearing um, into the, the inner component, the rotating element, and then onto the thrust bearing. So that's a, a perhaps a more typical version of a, of a live center. Um, I hope to be able to show you uh, um, why this is not capable of um, uh, sustaining uh, any significant um, radial load and uh, I'll set it up and I'll put a piece in there and deliberately knock it off center and see what happens to the run out on this part and we'll see what happens. I have the dial test indicator um, located on the, uh, the rotating part of the pressure tool and a piece of work clamped and you can see due to the inaccuracy of the way that I made it, there's a total run out of four thou on that. Um, I'm not sure if that's entirely due to the, the, the way I made it. I don't have a collet and when I turned it round, I actually just held it in my chuck. So there was a small amount of run out there. It could also be uh, some of the um, slack in the bearings, but I just want to demonstrate uh, why in fact um, this is no, this wouldn't be suitable for use as a center, as a rotating center. So at the moment there's four thou of total run out. If I just tap the, if I tap the, the, the disc that's in there, um, let's see what happens to the run out on the, on the spindle. Okay, so I've displaced it slightly. Yeah, now have a look at the run out now. It's now uh, between six and seven thou. So, of course, what's happening is the, the disc is only supported uh, on one side, really. So uh, with this design, uh, because of the flexibility in the, in the uh, bearings here, there's a certain amount of radial clearance, What's actually happening is the pressure tool is merely providing pressure um, onto the work and then for the work onto the, onto the pad which is uh, being driven by the chuck. So in fact, in this setup, uh, you've seen here that actually we only have effective friction to provide radial location on one side. So, um, you know, if we were to calculate uh, the amount of force required to displace this, we couldn't include the friction coming from this side. This is merely providing pressure um, and it's, it's able to, to move side to side, able to move radially because of the flexibility in the bearing. So I just wanted to point that out. So there are use of the pressure turning tool. In just a few minutes, we were able to make four discs, two in, in an electrical sheet, uh, a plastic, I'm not quite sure what it is, but it was certainly very hard on the tool. Um, and then um, one in a 25 gauge stainless steel sheet, and then one in 16 gauge mild steel. So uh, there we are, I, um, relatively quick process, and um, I think the result uh, is acceptable.